Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. Before I get to that, I want to thank every single one of you that watches my videos. Thank you for coming from all over the world. Thank you for the wonderful things you say about me. And thank you for supporting my channel. I am amazed. I'm blessed. I'm humbled and I'm thankful. So today's news. The first thing we have is an article titled Socialist Strategy Behind Brazilian President Lula's War on Free Speech. I'm not going to talk about that one except to give it to you to read. It's an interesting article that explains what's going on in Brazil and how uh, someone who supposedly supported free speech at one time is now trying to censor and quiet all the people that are opposed to him and uh, hide information about his own crimes. So typical politician, typical leader, typical kind of stuff that you see. That link will be in the description along with all the others. The next article I have is Julian Assange gave America the ugly truth. And I do want to read just a little bit of this to you because I found it interesting. If politicians truly respect the First Amendment, they must defend the freedom of whistleblowers and investigative journalists to deliver the truth to the public, however ugly it may be. WikiLeaks revelations about U.S. involvement in Afghanistan and Iraq were hard for Americans to process. We learned that civilian casualties had been far higher in Afghanistan than had been officially reported, for instance and that 150 innocent Afghans and Pakistanis were held in Guantanamo Bay for years without charges, despite the government's assurances that only the, quote, worst of the worst, unquote, terrorists were detained there. In short, the U.S. broke its own rules on foreign soil time and time again. And then at the bottom, but more importantly, the prosecution of Assange as a publisher the first time the Espionage Act would be used this way, would effectively criminalize the basic work of obtaining and publishing state secrets. It would make a lot of investigative journalism relating to national security close to impossible. This is the, what I call the law of unintended consequences. Because you don't like Julian Assange, you want to take him to trial and you want to convict him. But... When you do that, it sets a precedent that can be used against other people who are not like Julian Assange, who are merely trying to reveal the truth about what's going on in our country, and you subject them to the same jeopardy. Already, journalists are being punished for exercising their First Amendment rights. In February, Catherine Herridge was held in contempt of court for refusing to disclose her source for a set of stories about a Chinese-American scientist who was investigated by the FBI over alleged t ties to the Chinese military. CBS, Harridge's former employer, said the court decision should be concerning to all Americans who value the role of a free press. And that's the truth. That is a concern. If the prosecution succeeds, he said, of the Assange case, investigative reporting based on classified information will be given a near death blow. And if you think about it, if we can't do investigative reporting on classified information, then the government can classify everything and do anything they want and get away with it because no one will know. There was a time in my life when I, I honestly believed that anyone who revealed classified information was a traitor. But as I've grown older and I've begun to realize that it is important that we be allowed to see some of this information, I've begun to understand that it's not always a bad thing when people reveal classified information, especially when it reveals that the government is not even obeying their own rules or not even obeying their own laws or worse yet, not obeying the Constitution. So it's something to think about. There's a balance there, I think. The next item I have is a Twitter, uh, excuse me, an X tweet. 
Do, you, do we still call them tweets or do we call them X's? I don't know. But anyway, I thought this was real interesting. Um, let me get this stock first of all. Come on now. Okay. Um, this is a Chinese American. And she lives in New Hampshire and she's running for Congress. And she's vehemently opposed to gun control. And I want you to hear what she has to say. Hi, my name is uh, Lily Tang Williams. Welcome to my live free or die state. Actually, I am a, a Chinese immigrant who survived communism. And uh, under Mao, you know, 40 million people were starving to death after he sold the communism to them. And 20 million people died, murdered during his cultural revolution. So my question to you, David, is that can you guarantee me a gun owner tonight our government in the U.S., in D.C., will never, never become a tyrannical government. Can you guarantee that to me? There's no way I can ever guarantee that any government will not be tyrannical. Well, then the debate on gun control is over because I will <laughs> never give up my guns. Never, never. And you should go to China to see how gun control works for dictatorship of the CCP. Hi, my name is... She is absolutely right. And you, you can't make an argument against her because she comes from experience. She has lived there. She's lived through it. Then there's this. Whoops. What happened there? Hold on a minute. Oh, I got too much. Okay. Uh, this is another X post that I wanted you to see. And what this, they... what this post illustrates is how you can, you can argue, argue from facts, you can argue from logic, you can argue from statistics, but if the person on the other side doesn't care about any of that, then they just ignore it. If you don't know who this is, this is the, uh, I'm not going to say his name because I can't stand the guy, but this is the guy that came from the Parkland shooting in Florida and is now a gun control activist. And, and he says really stupid stuff, which you will see. Listen, this is not him speaking now. When you look at gun deaths, they broadly go into five different categories. Suicide, which is nearly two thirds, uh, murders, which have been steadily dropping. Uh, there is a multi-decade trend of the steady dropping of the murder rate uh, over time, even as uh, there are more and more guns per people in this country, 420 or so million and counting, uh, about 13 million a year being added to that. Then you have, um, you have uh, uh, justified killings, um, which have actually kind of been going down as well because when there's less crime, there's less people killing the criminals that are victimizing them. Uh, you have police shootings, which also have been going down roughly the same as the, the crime rates going down because less crime equals less police interactions equals less police shootings. There's also been a lot more police accountability, not nearly enough, and I think David agrees with me on that, but there has been some measures that have reduced the number of, of shootings as well. And then finally, accidents, which have dropped by 90% in the last 40 years. Um, as a result of safer, uh, better manufacturing of guns and also because of more access to, to training on, on how to properly use the guns. Interestingly enough, most of that has happened during the time that there are fewer and fewer, fewer and fewer states that require any kind of licensing or permits to own guns. So we're seeing that if there was ever an argument that licensing reduced accidents, it, it certainly doesn't. They're reducing on their own. Um, the reason that the gun violence rate is going up is because after many years of going down, the suicide rate is going back up. And I think if we really, if we're looking at gun violence as a whole and realizing that literally every other form of gun violence is dropping except for suicide, this is not a gun problem. It is a suicide problem. And the, the, uh, the, the uh, committing of suicide is increasing from all types of usage, including guns. That is what we are looking at here. No. I want to point out that when he talked about these trends of, of uh, gun violence and murders and so forth, crime going down, 
That was true probably when he said this, but it's no longer true because with the defund the police movement, crime has been increasing and murders have been increasing. And that won't change until we get out of this insanity of we need less police. That's just a stupid, stupid argument. But anyway, let's continue listening. All right, as a follow-up question, um, why does the U.S. have this problem when other developed nations do not? One minute response, David. It's the guns. <laughs> Hate to break it to you guys. I mean, <laughs> it's the guns. It's just the guns. Now listen to what he says next. You want to talk about? You want to talk about graphs? I, I wish I had my own printout of a graph of the. You know. <laughs> I wish I had some facts, but I don't. I'll let you watch the rest of that yourself. It's just I can't stand that guy. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Okay. The last item that I have on the news for today is something that uh, makes me very sad. But I have to show it to you. I don't have any choice. Navy torpedoes embarrassing post showing commanding officer, commanding officer, Firing rifle with backward and covered scope. Seriously. <laughs> look at the picture. If you look at the picture, you can see that his scope is mounted on the rifle backwards. And the scope covers, the lens covers, are still on. So there's no way that he could see anything through that scope. And in fact, he's not seeing anything through it. He's just firing the gun aimlessly out into the water. Oh, God. The Navy posted this picture. And <laughs> it was rightly and roundly ridiculed. You can read the article. There's plenty of mockery going on, not only from civilians, but from the other service branches. The National Guard jumped in. The Marines jumped in. And they're all showing how stupid the Navy is. And the, the sad thing to me, here's one where a guy said, here, I fixed it for you. And he has the guy holding the gun backwards with the lens covers sticking up. You can see them, those little things on the ends of, of the uh, scope pointing uh, kind of diagonally up towards the center. Those are the plastic lens covers, or rubber lens covers, that he forgot to remove when he took that photograph. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. Uh, as a Navy vet, all I can say is I'm embarrassed. And there's a lot more going on in the Navy now that embarrasses me anyway, but this just... One person actually posted, we're going to lose a lot of people in the next war. Yes, if they're that dumb, yeah, we are. And, you know, our, our service branches, the United States military service branches now, are more concerned about racial discrimination and gender discrimination than they are about firing a rifle correctly. Now, does that make any sense to you for a military? It's just sad. And, and I've said it before myself. The next war that we get into, and we surely will get into one because our politicians just love to get us into wars. We're going to lose a lot of good young people because they haven't been trained to fight. They haven't been trained to fight at all. I mean, we got Navy vessels having collisions with other vessels. They sunk a Japanese fishing trawler one time. A Navy vessel. Stuff like that never used to happen. The Navy was professional. It was a service that I could be proud of. But I'm not proud of it now. And it saddens me. It really does. Anyway, that's the news for the day. As usual, I'll put all the links in the description so you can follow up on this stuff yourself if you have a mind to. 
And I pray for you that you will have an abundant life, that you'll live a long time, that you'll be healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I also pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Mirror Vet, out.